Stations are go for today's ground test of the Space Launch System Booster. We are now less than three minutes from the firing. Alicia, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening right now, just shortly before this test begins? Right, so right now, all of our data acquisition systems are basically getting queued up. Uh, we'll be gathering 600 gigabytes of data for this test. And everything is initiating, all the data systems are starting up and the cameras. And that's really important. Right, we, when we conduct these tests to gather data, recording. it's important to be able to get all that data. Yeah. All high speed data systems are recording. Roger. And I believe there are 82 test objectives over 530 instrumentation units. That's correct. T minus two minutes. Low speed data operators begin recording. Roger. All low speed systems are recording. Roger. Bus monitor operator select stop all followed by start all to begin a new recording file. Bus monitor is recording a new file. Roger. Ultrasonic system is recording. Roger. T minus 90 seconds. Minus 80 seconds. Test control coordinator, stand by to commit the motor. Standing by. T minus 70 seconds. Commit the motor. Motor is committed. T minus 60 seconds. One minute to ignition. The test is a go.
successful two-minute SLS booster test has concluded. Alicia, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening right now? I believe the uh, quench arm should be coming in. Right, so we'll be swinging the quench boom. You can see it start right now. Uh, basically, that's really important. It's going to, like a big fire extinguisher, right? It's going to go put out the fire on the inside of the motor. One of the major objectives we have is to go take this motor apart. We'll essentially do a very thorough dissection, and we kind of want to freeze time and stop the motor in its configuration that it's out from the burn such that we can go and, and see how it did. And, and I even understand there is a nozzle plug there that it's important that you, you know you have a camera to watch how it breaks up and that also that you go and collect those pieces afterwards. Right, so we'll actually have a, we had a mirror pretest, and uh, that mirror will help determine how the, the nozzle plug broke up. We'll have a crew that goes up after we've determined the area is safe and they'll go collect the pieces of the nozzle plug and evaluate them for size and, and the debris that we've generated. I even understand they go through and they actually number the pieces and sort of graph it out so they you know, specifically understand exactly how it breaks apart. That's correct. The nozzle plug had a grid drawn on it, uh, very detailed uh, to be able to orient it and put the puzzle back together. Mm -hmm. And that nozzle plug will be in the booster uh, when it launches. You, you need it there to ensure your, your motor um, is at the right temperature and Right, it's basically just an environmental seal. You want to make sure that uh, that you're controlling the moisture in there and kind of keeping the animals out as well. Yeah, all right. And what else is happening for today's test? I mean, the test is over, but it's far from over for you guys. Right, so we'll basically be uh, in a stand down for about half an hour. We'll send the crew back in, basically in the reverse order that they, that they evacuated, uh, moving through every step of the way, making sure that it's safe along the way. Uh, we'll have our post-fire crew up there doing a quick once-over and... Uh, then we'll basically just save the motor, close it back up, and start a very detailed uh, post-fire post inspection. All right. Thanks so much, Alicia Carrillo here, a NASA orbital ATK engineer. Uh, experienced it from the bunker, and this time experiencing it with me outside the Engineering Support Center. Thank you. That certainly was an exciting test. Even here, we're about three miles away from the test. You could actually feel uh, reverberation in here and, and the doors vibrating a bit. A very powerful booster. But what I really want to know is I want to go out to Kirk, who's in the public viewing area. Kirk, how's it going out there? Man, I'm going to tell you what, the level of applause that the booster test got from the public down here, it was great. Everybody's just so excited. And, and I've got two people here with me that drove a long way. They came from Wyoming. They came great distances to be here and be a part of this test today, just like NASA's working to go great distances in our solar system. I want to introduce everybody to Leslie and Dave Uraski. Leslie, Dave, you guys are teachers. Leslie, i got to ask you, how was that? That was one of the most amazing things I've seen. Ever since I was 12, I thought I would be the first geologist on Mars. And now that I'm a high school teacher, it's my job to get other young ladies to have that dream. That is awesome, Leslie. Now, Dave, you're a retired teacher, and you used to teach, what'd you say, technical, technical, technical subjects? Technical education. How was this for you, for you? I like things like this because it allows you to take the students from the current technology to think outside of the box to what's in the future. Yeah. So... What are you going to go back and say? Well, I'm probably going to cry when I tell the kids because seeing this in person makes it real. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming out here today and be a part of this with us. Uh, just thankful that we had the thousands of people here with us as well. Hey, guys, listen, we're, our work's still kind of going a little bit. We've got a lot of people still trying to get over there and talk to Don and talk to our subject matter experts. Uh, but, uh, Kim, I understand you've got somebody who with you right now. Oh, Bill, I'm sorry. Bill, I understand you got some people there that really, for them, this, this job is just getting started to collect the data and everything that they need. Oh, that's right, Kirk. Yes, uh, Orbital ATK pulled off a fantastic test. I'm joined by Charlie Precourt, Vice President, General Manager of the Propulsion Systems. It's right here at Orbital right. ATK. And, of course, veteran astronaut. This is fantastic. It was such a, a great test. Uh, the, the most impressive part to me is always when you see the, the light flash, you see the smoke, and then six seconds later when that shockwave hits you exactly. and everybody in the crowd reacts almost the same way, going, ooh, <laughs> they weren't almost like they were like, why is it quiet? And now there's the noise. They weren't expecting that, were they? It's always a surprise. That rumble that you get is awesome, man. Uh, you know, 
watching it for two minutes and six seconds and then seeing the, the thrust level dwindle down, you know, you start to feel really good that we made it through exactly what we were looking for. Beautiful test. And I think that uh, a lot of people don't understand that when we watch them as they were launch off the launch pad down at Kennedy, it's you get that initial shockwave and of course the noise, but it's going away from you. Here it's two minutes right here on the ground, just barely over a mile away. Barely over a mile away as opposed to three miles down there and with the background of the canyon there reflecting the sound even more so. So yeah, we get a lot of energy out of it right here. Okay, so uh, Charlie, tell us a little bit about what the team is up there doing right now. We know they've obviously they've quenched it, but what's what's in the immediate future for the engineers at Orbital ATK? So we're uh, right now we're into the mode of. Uh conserve the forensic data so we've got the test has been completed we had got our way through shutdown we want to freeze everything in the